Welcome to another episode of Pistons of Fury. In this episode, we are introducing a new project card of the channel. Alright, in this episode, we are doing something new. We're not working in the garage. Uh, we are introducing a new project car to the channel. Now, this car I've talked about a whole bunch. Um, you've probably seen it in the background on a couple of videos. I know I've referenced it once or twice. Um, actually, I have a video of repairing some stuff on it, which I haven't published. I might do that just as like a bonus feature at some point. Um, but without any further ado, here it is. This is a 1966. Dodge Coronet Deluxe Station Wagon. The car measures 18 and a half feet long. Um, I've had this car since 2003, which would be um, 2018 now, so about 15 years. Um, when I first got it, basically the interior was gutted. Uh, mechanically it ran, had drum brakes all around, old suspension, everything original. Um, so what I did was I did all the body work, repaired everything mechanically, um, did new brakes, did a front disc brake conversion, so it's got the Mopar cop car disc brakes up front. Um, these are from the, the Monaco's, no, the Diplomats, late, late 70s, maybe early 80s um, stock Mopar disc brakes. The wheels are uh, bullet knockoffs from eBay. Um, they are 18 by 9, which for this car, and specifically the, the size tire that I'm running, which is 255, 45, 18. Uh, very big, a little bit of rubbing, but for the most part, I've got that corrected um, with, uh, with spacers and things like that. So, um, current status of the car is that, you know, basically it's, it's at a place where um, I had it, you know, I would say 90% restored. Um, about six years ago when I moved out here to California, I had just gotten the paint done. Um, since then, I've had some, you know, I, I drove it a lot. You know, what I love about the car is that um, it has, you know, it just has that X factor, right? So people are always talking to me. So whenever I take it out anywhere, um, you know, I'm getting comments from people whose parents had one like that or who just think it's cool because it's like a surf wagon. Um, so, you know, that's that's the cool thing about the cars. You take it anywhere and you immediately get into conversations with people. You, you know, my, my wife hated it because she just wants something that she can drive around. She doesn't really want all the attention, but, you know, I like it. I like talking to people and, um, and hearing their stories and hearing what they think about the car. So, um, the car was originally a tan color, um, but right now I have it two-toned. Um, it's just a standard black black on top. And on the side, this green color is a 1966 Corvette green color. It is called Cascade Green. I had to have it specially mixed because the old PPG paint number for it doesn't exist anymore. Um, so that's that's all the good. That's the good stuff. Now the bad is that um, the paint, which I had done by a guy locally in Atlanta, gave me a good deal on it. Um, paint job was 2,500 bucks which, you know, for all the body work he did was, was a pretty good deal. However, it has not been super durable. Um, I just don't think he put enough coats on it. So, you know, over the years, sitting here in my driveway with kids around and things like that, um, you know, so we're going to go through some imperfections here. I've got dings on the door. I've got uh, paint peeling here on the black. Um, up here on my rail, um, he actually put the, the caulking that you do in these, in these rain gutters and actually didn't give it enough time to dry. So he painted right over that. 
and now it's cracking so I'm gonna have to redo that and then on the top I've got some peeling of a few spots of clear coat it's just the sitting out here in the California Sun has has done that um, and then the thing that <laughs> the thing that bothers me most about the car is on this rear quarter panel um, the second day after I had it painted I filled it up with gas gas tank swelled and basically leaked down and ate all the clear off my brand new paint job and then to add insult to injury um, something that's been happening here is um, rust has bubbled through pretty bad on this rear quarter. Um, when I had the car painted, I actually did all of the body work on the other side, which I'll show you in a minute, and that has had no issues. And this side looked fine, so I didn't even sand off the paint and take a look, but I assume there's a whole bunch of Bondo and everything, so this will probably be one of the first things I do to this car in its second phase of restoration is uh, chop this off, make a new panel and I will take you guys on that journey. Um, so one of the other things that's, uh, that's cool about the car is, so this car came in um, basically two configurations. It came in a nine passenger station wagon configuration and it came in a six, which is this car. So um, because I don't have the third row in the car, what I do have is this nice trap door area where I have my, uh, my battery box. I've got a AC, like a head unit. Um, and then an amp for the sub, and then the sub is actually in. Yeah, it's in that little compartment right there where the spare tire used to go. So, I mean, you could fit a spare tire down here too, so I'm not sure exactly what was going on with this car. Two spare tires, kind of cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's that. So let's see, moving to the other side. Um, this section right here, I've done some body work. Uh, basically what happened is my wife backed into a truck and dented this whole panel. So I luckily I got it kind of massaged back into its appropriate configuration, but that's an old primer and it needs to be recoded. So I will be repainting probably the whole car. Um, and then the other spot is that here on the trunk I've got some so basically what happens here with this trunk is that when this window is up water just pours down through the trunk you know just like a door on these old cars water is designed to go through them um, and then I have some rust bubbles on the other part of the bottom of that and then the bumper obviously I had re-chromed in Atlanta before I moved out to the west coast and it's just uh, it's just trash now thanks to the salt air and salt water. So I need to find someplace locally or maybe even in Nevada to get that re uh, What else can I tell you? So I've also got some surface rust appearing here um, on the edges of the doors, down here, under here. But this is, this is the fender that I, or not the fender, but this is the quarter that I actually modified um, and did the body work on. I have patch panels in here, it looks great got some light bubbling here so I'll, I'll sand that down and, and get to that rust and then I also have some spots on the corners of the door here where it's bubbling through so I need to fix those as well and then you know just a few random things here so that kind of covers it for the oh and then obviously the windshield I will need to replace at some point um, all right so let's see let's look under the hood here if I can do this with one hand, I think. All right, so what we have here under the hood is a standard uh, Mopar small block, 318 LA style block. Um, this is actually from a 1972 Dodge Dart along with the 727 torque flight transmission and the stock torque converter. So this thing, as you can imagine, this is a heavy car. It's around 3,700 pounds. It's a real dog. Uh, it's slow. You know, it, it sounds good, it's a nice cruiser, but it is slow. Um, so not not super fun to drive, it's nice to cruise around in, but you know, it doesn't give you that that sense of excitement that maybe you get from the Mustang or, or a quicker car. So that's one of the things we're gonna be changing in this car. Uh, but I will talk about the future plans in a minute. Uh, I wanna get through the rest of this. So uh, this is pretty much you know, just Holly four barrel conversion. Um, I've got this old school Edelbrock dual plane. It's made for the 318, not made for the 360s, which is actually something that a lot of people make the mistake of. They install a newer manifold, which is made for the larger small blocks, and it's just too much for these little guys. So 
you know, they just don't get the power they want out of them. So this thing also has shorty headers. It's got a custom exhaust. I babbed the downpipes, you know, years back, so they're they're pretty rough, but they work. Uh, it sounds good. Uh, let's see what else. Aluminum radiator, because the original one's split in half. And um, finally, and you know, as I think I've noted in an old video that I posted, um, this engine is done. It's the uh, thrust bearings on the bottom end are toast. So it's, uh, it's days are numbered. I'm leaving it intact, and I will continue to leave it intact for a little while, just because, um, you know, I, I need to be able to move it around, and it does that, it does that fine, um, but I will not be trusting this on any sort of long-term journeys or anything like that anytime soon. Um, let's see, I don't think there's anything else on the engine that I can show you guys. So, we can jump to the interior so let's do that um, so the cool thing about this car as you can imagine is because I have so much room in here uh, the back seat actually folds down flat so you can fit a lot a lot of stuff in here you can sleep back there take the drive in so it's just super cool it's a great car um, <clears throat> now the dash I've left completely stock I like the stock look you know with the exception I've got this autometer tack down here uh, kind of an old school look, it's chrome. I have a hose clamp to the steering column, which at some point I do want to change. Um, and then as kind of a just a hidden thing, um, along with my napkins, I have a digital uh, three gauge pod, which is just oil pressure, water temp, and volts, um, just to keep an, keep an eye on everything. And that's that. Um, let's see, I've got some door speakers installed. They're just infinity standard, like eBay clearance kind of thing. Sounds good. Um, all right, that's that. All right, so that's the car. Um, it's a great foundation for for a project build. Like I said, I've had it, I've had it for for years and years. I know it inside out. I know I know everything about it. Um, no, it's history, or at least you know recent history. So that's uh, that's kind of the foundation of the car. So let's talk about what we're going to do to this car. Um, as you saw. It's going to require some body work, um, so I'm going to be doing that. That will kind of be the first thing because, you know, aside from cost of materials and things, that's that's free. You know, that's that's just free, not not free. Um, it's it's going to take some time to do, um, but but that's okay. So you guys will be dealing with some sanding, some welding, cutting, things like that, um, and that's going to kind of be the first thing that I take a stab at. At the point that uh, funds become available, um, we're going to switch over to, to powertrain because that's going to make the biggest difference in this car. And not to keep you guys in suspense, but what's going to happen is this car is going to get LS swapped and likely LS turbo swapped um, with a 4L ADE automatic transmission. So it's going to stay slush box. Uh, I'd love to put a stick in it, but with the kind of power that I am looking to make on the car, um, you know, I'd be stuck with either some super expensive um, Tremec trans, like a TR6060 or T56 Magnum, something like that, uh, or going old school to something like the uh, Z32 um, five-speed transmission, which which is the same internals as a Skyline transmission, which can actually hold you know upwards of 700 horsepower. It's it's pretty proven. So if I wanted to go that route, I would do that. But I think what I'm going to do is just stick with the Sloppy Mechanics recommendation, the 4L ADE, it's, it's pretty much bulletproof. Um, so that's what it'll be. It'll be a 5.3 or 4.8 uh, turbo, single turbo, and, um, you know, pretty straightforward, proven, proven um, setup. So that's the big, that's the big surprise for the car. Um, but I, I want to get the body right. You know, it's got to sit here. It's got to be able to... Um, sit out in the weather here in California where I live and not rust. And I know that as I leave the rust, it's going to continue to rust because that's how rust works. Um, so that'll kind of be the first thing. But that is the, the project intro. This car is going to be fast. It's going to maintain its like sleek, uh, you know, beach cruiser vibe, but it'll have a little surprise underneath the hood. Um, so I'm excited. I'm excited to start working on this. The Mustang will, will continue. Um, I'll probably have some upcoming episodes just as I start to make progress on that. But this wagon, um, you know, this is going to be the, the, the big one, I think, for, for 2018 for the channel. Uh, I'm thinking the, you know, the primary, primary content is going to be about this car. You know, 2017 was the Mustang, getting that working. 
that was a yeah, most mostly a success uh, it, it works it drives got a few little things but yeah 2018 for the wagon so that's where we are that's the walk around that's the general plan for the car I uh, would love to hear your comments and thoughts or ideas you know this car is kind of like a canvas at this point it's a good foundation I, I know what I have to work with so uh, yeah I'm looking forward to it so yeah let me know what you guys think uh, I know this wasn't a super heavy content episode but I, I did want to give a little bit of debrief on the car because I have featured it before um, so yeah I didn't want the mystery to be out there surrounding what I'm gonna be doing with it Anyway, enough rambling. This has been a Rambletron style video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think, and I will see you guys next week.